What's good, everybody? It is your boy, BQ. Welcome back to the channel. We've got a TNA mailbag episode for you guys. Compiled these questions from the TNA engagement disregard, the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook. I try to do these once a month if I can, um, at least once every other month, but I try to get into them once a month, um, especially when content is a little slow at the moment. I used Casey Navarro on the graphic uh, thumbnail here. I don't actually don't have any first class questions, but I use them here because I kind of wanted to kick off talking about first class a little bit because um, we know that Rich Swan's going to be out of pocket here for a bit. And I just finished the episode where there was a backstage segment with, with Casey and, and uh, AJ Francis. And I am undecided on what I think about them yet as a team, because I'm trying to watch that group as if Rich Swan is not returning. The image on Facebook disregard on Facebook on the internet, on the, TNA website does have all three of them. From my conversations, I don't believe that Rich Swan is going to get released. I think they are uh, on his side. Not that they're choosing sides, but I mean, I think they're in his corner, I should say. So I, I'm, I'm undecided on what I think about this current version. Because again, I'm trying to picture it as if Rich was not coming back. But then I also pictured it with Rich coming back. And I just, um, I don't know. I kind of want to know in the comments your guys' thoughts on on this uh, this version of First Class that was very much thrown together. And Casey Navarro has done work on Impact before. And I think everyone has been pretty impressed with his with what he does in the ring. And uh you know, he's one of the guys that the uh, the fan base will tweet at the company and say, hey, sign this guy. You know, and he actually retweeted it a couple weeks ago, right before they brought him on to first class. And he said, I agree or something along those lines. I don't know. But uh, first class is one of my favorite parts about the show. And I'm trying to mentally prepare myself for, for it to be vastly different. Uh, but I want to know your guys' thoughts. I'm going to leave that that forum kind of open up in the comments. And I'm going to get into these questions here one time for your mind. All right. Uh, what we got? AK Infinity. All things considered, how would you evaluate TNA in 2024? And what improvements do you anticipate for 2025? So I've said this many times on my podcast. I do think the the quality of the show has been a lot better than 2024. There was a lot of episodes throughout the course of 2024 that I just didn't really enjoy. And for me, it's been like really solid this year. The The uh, TNA Plus show has been pretty solid. Uh, I thought the first two pay-per-views were very, very good. I was not a fan of Slammiversary. I, maybe not a fan is, is not the correct terminology. It didn't stand out to me. Like Usually I go into Slammiversary like, yo, this is the show every year. This is going to be the one you know, this is always their 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 top show, and it just didn't do it for me uh, because it was a very baby face heavy uh, card as far as the victors. Uh, when you look at the results, because the previous couple were a little more um, in favor of the heels, and that's kind of where I like wrestling. I do enjoy watching the heels win. Uh, because I think too much victories from the baby faces can make things very stale and boring. And you can drag out feuds and stories a little bit more the more that the baby the more that the heels win and the more heat that we get. You know you understand what I'm saying? So for me, Bound for Glory would have better been a better culmination uh, of some of these feuds where some of these baby faces could have got over. Because I, I it looks like they're going to go a little further into 2024 um, as far as not having lame duck programming because it looks like they're going to have a set of tapings after Bound for Glory, which I don't think they did last year. So I think they're going to go a little deeper into the year. But it is, I mean, it is what, September now? 
and when you have slam reverse where all the baby faces win like you're you don't have a lot of time to build heat up <laughs> to bound for bound for glory and i don't even know how much heat you can build throughout the rest of the year at this point so do i rate it better than last year yes um i was telling someone at tna yesterday or the day before that i thought the the year started off very very good and then i thought the orlando tapings uh went you know, Mike and I were both saying this, this, yo, this feels like impact wrestling. You know, it was like after hard to kill, they did the Orlando taping and I don't know what was after it, but I just remember for about a period of two months, we're just like, this, this is just impact. This isn't, this isn't the new vision and new version of TNA. It didn't feel like that at all. Um, but then after that period, I, I think things have really improved. What I was told was that the Orlando tapings, they the reason it felt like impact wrestling is because even though scott was relieved of his duties they still ran with scott's storylines and that's why it felt like 2024 and then after those tapings that's when um you know they kind of put the new creative team or the new creative process in place and then things started feeling a little bit different so i think it's been a good year i think what we're going to see in 2025 is a huge um well two things the production quality that we were promised in 2023 i think we're going to get that in 25 and then um we're going to see a huge step up in the knockouts division i'm i am confident that confident in that for my conversations all right colby cooper's asking whoops sorry i just lost his question any updates on when Kylan King is supposed to return from her injury? So I don't get injury news because I know you'll see like the Sean Saps and the Melters of the world because uh, they have no integrity. They'll get that kind of information. But what I've been told in the past is that that's private. Uh, that really that kind of stuff shouldn't be shared. But but I was told that uh, Kylan King is is coming back soon. So I don't think the injury is going to last throughout the end of the year. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, if I'm fantasy booking, which I don't think they're going to do, I would have her answer the open challenge at Bound for Glory and win the title. I don't think that's what they're going to do. I I think like her showing up in the Call Your Shot gauntlet probably makes more sense. But I think we're going to see her this year. It's what I was told. I think we'll see her this year. I don't think she's going to be um, quite out for the year, but I, I am told she's close to re close to a return. Uh, Randy Adams, uh, this is kind of outdated because he was asking about the Heather Reckless rumor. Uh, uh, do you think he's also asking though? Do you think what they'll ever get rid of the Scott Demore crew and by proxy the piss yellow filter? So I've been pointing out. I mean, I point out the filter every time, but um, it's it's made its return. It's it's at a very low grade right now, so you can only see it at certain angles. Um, if you guys don't understand what I'm talking about with a filter, so it's uh, when you're editing video, uh, you have many, many, many different tracks that you can work with, and in order is the uh, the priority. So like the very, very first track, whatever you put on there is going to be um, on top. So say it's just like a TNA logo. The TNA logo will remain on the entire video no matter what. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. So what's being done is they're throwing a, a filter on there. Uh, and I say it's a filter because it, it, it's almost like um, a window with a tint. You just, just kind of think of it like that. So it's not the color levels because if you use the color levels, you're adjusting everything on the screen. But if you put... Uh, like a like a filter or a tint on it, it just gives an overall effect to what you're watching. And the reason that this is used, this is used more more so in graphics. It's done to blend things together. So if you're looking at this Casey Navarro image right now, I've kind of pointed this out before. I've used my thumbnails as examples. Like clearly, we know he's not standing in the middle of the street, right? But I have put some filters on it to where it blends together 
you know, there's a bunch of pink lights, but it but it it doesn't look like I just cut and pasted a picture of Casey Navarro and put it on top. Like the the pink lights and his skin tone, it all blends together, right? Like it, it's there, it's fairly harmonious, is the best way to put it. So when you're putting a filter on something, it's supposed to help make things harmonious, but it's it works in graphics, but it doesn't work in in video, you know. Um, but in regard to Scott's crew, they just, frankly, they just haven't found the replacements yet. They, they have, they, there's going to be change in this area. I am, I am assured that TNA knows this show doesn't look good. Now, that being said, it looks significantly better right now than it did in 2024. Like, we don't get the real dark, you know, you can't see the crowd at all. You know, the filter I'm talking about right now, it's at a very low grade, like I said. Um, the GM Miller stuff is still very bad backstage with the shadows and the and the levels. Um, there was the this episode where she was interviewing Heather Reckless, and I was like, oh, the, you know, the shadow's not bad. And then um, Ash by Elegance walks up, and she's completely covered by shadow, and she's in the dark. I mean, it looked awful. You know, so there's there's a lot of work that has to be done back there. But when you're talking about watching the TV show, I think it does look a lot better. And that probably comes with improvement um, with the people in place. Because I've used myself as an example before as a graphic designer. Just fuck, pull up my thumbnails from uh, when I started this channel 10 years ago. And I was a certified graphic designer before i started podcasting those thumbnails look like shit because it was my first venture into thumbnails and when you're an amateur and when you're a beginner and and you're learning you think things look good this you know this isn't anything in life that you're learning for the first time any kind of performance art or art or, or you know um you look back and you're like, I can't believe I thought that was good. But at the time you did think that that's, that's the stage that the, this individual or individuals are at is that a, a beginning stage. Um, we're a few years into this beginning stage, unfortunately, but they're in a stage where they, they are messing with levels because they can, because the, the options are there. So you fuck with them because you feel like you're supposed to like you have to but when you're in a amateur stage it looks good it looks really really good to you oh man i'm fucking with all these things and looks this looks incredible and then as as you gain, gain experience you're like okay that actually doesn't look good so i think that some experience is being gained and we are seeing an improvement in how the show looks um but we're i i think um, next year we're going to see a huge a huge increase i think i think it's going to look like significantly better but we're getting there we're definitely getting there even with the people that are in place um mike gilbert's asking on an update of potential move to orlando this is like a real big thing with him he really really wants to know about this but i'm um it's very tight-lipped very tight-lipped so there's no information i can get on that um actually i think it's the second time he's asked this question <laughs> i minor lopez uh once josh alexander's contract is up do you see him jumping to scott's new promotion maybe a few other as well um i kind of get this question a lot scott's promotion is an independent you know i think he's just booking people i don't see it as uh a rival promotion i don't see it as as him signing exclusive talent and maybe he does you know uh, usually every promotion has their their favorites that they always use like that's how i was familiar with jake something uh before he came to tna because he was a local to the indie scene in uh st louis and southern illinois so i saw him wrestle like a hundred times before he you know he was ever on on tna so you know most promotions have their their favorites, their locals. And, you know, so I think that's going to be no different, but I think I recall, I think I recall, I re I think I remember Josh saying that he didn't have much of a relationship with Scott. 
prior to signing. So, like, I, I mean, they were aware of each other, obviously. Um, I'm pretty sure Scott booked them at, what was this, with BCW? Was that his uh, promotion? I think he booked them there many times, but I think I remember Josh saying that he actually didn't have that kind of relationship with Scott. So I don't think they're as close as people think they are. I think Josh will be around for a while. There's 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 a possibility he could like do NXT or something like that, but they haven't used him yet. And there's there's built in storylines with Ethan Page. I think he will show up there at some point. But the fact that they didn't reach out and grab him right away, like they did a Jordan Grace, like they did a Rosemary, like the Rascals, just tells me that this is probably his home. I, I don't. I know he wants to test the free agent market. Everybody does, because you want to see: is there more opportunity out there? Is there more money for me out there? But I'm. I don't. I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think anyone is. I've. I've really learned over time and i've shared that information with you guys that as much as the fan the fans the wrestlers were shocked when scott was fired in the beginning and you know again because he allowed the perception that he was he was the man he was the guy that this company didn't run without him every idea was his you know like tony khan does the same shit but wrestlers have learned um since then, that hey, yo, this company is sustainable. There's, we're doing good things. Uh, Scott wasn't doing everything he said he was doing. So I'm, I'm not too concerned about anyone jumping ship. I thought there was going to be some dominoes at one point. It hasn't been the case. The only the only domino to truly fall has been Giselle Shaw, but you know everyone saw that one coming. Ayo hey, Adebayo, thoughts on Frankie Kazarian's run this year? King of TNA gimmick, excuse me. Could you see a TNA eventually strapping the world title belt on him? So I'm enjoying the gimmick. I enjoy his work, but he they're using him as I don't want to see he's not in the Dolph Ziggler role because he's not losing that much, but he's not he's also not really winning that much. Like they're using him as a good hand. And that is my only issue with what they're doing with him. Like, there's no, there's no perceived push. You know, I think it was a great, I think it's a great character, um, a great rebrand for him. And I think there's a lot more that they can do with it. But it just kind of seems like they use him when it's convenient. You know what I mean? Like he's he's just that. I'm trying to think if there's there's any wrestlers in the the impact wrestling past from you know since i've been podcasting that i can compare it to um off the top of my head i can't but he's just like he's just right there in the mid card uh you know they they tease him in the main event scene you know obviously he was the second and last not the second and last he was the last person eliminated at slam anniversary uh they're kind of teasing that he Wants a world title shot, but it's like he wasn't even on the episode this week. That's kind of how I, I view it. They're just using him as a good hand. Could I see him as champion? In 2025, I could. You know, if you've got Nick Nemeth gone, um, let's say hypothetically Joe Hendry's gone. I, I, I don't think he's like a foregone conclusion leaving like Jordan Grace is. But if you see it, if there's a couple of people at the top that that leave, I can see him getting a little bit of a run. But uh, I think right now the the babyface side of things is so strong with Mike Santana, Joe Hendry, uh, and then even throwing Nick Nemeth in there, who's the current champion. I don't think I don't think we're like in need of this heel champion. Like like Moose has always been a good heel champion when there's no real contenders. Like he can just hold the title forever and it works, you know. I don't think we need that in the world in the main event scene right now. So if he were to win, I would see like a Steve Macklin title run where he he drops it in like a month, which that still angers me to this day. All right, Sal Valentin, are you fully 
Sat aside being number two, and do you plan on taking the top spot for Mike? <laughs> so what I've been saying in my last couple podcasts, you know, I've always said it's the number one place to be, uh, and now I'm I'm like I've uh, I'm giving up the spot to Mike Gilbert. I, I am content falling down the the ladder here a little bit. I've had guest podcasts on my channel over the years because I've tried to help other uh, other people build up their their channels in a way that I didn't really have. Like I didn't have a podcast that I was able to jump on and promote my shit. You know what I mean? It was, you know, for the most part, um, self-made, uh, had a little help for some wrestling, uh, TNA forums and things like that in the beginning. But, you know, for the most part, I use my knowledge of, of YouTube and social media marketing to get it, uh, growing. But I mean, I've been pointing out like I, I I listen to Mike's Patreon, and I mean it's it's the detail that he goes into about wrestling news, and um, again, just stuff like I I'm not like putting anyone down who cares about this stuff. I just don't. But I'm I'm not the type to pull up a seating chart and be like, well, okay, well they're gonna sell out, or they only have half the tickets. Like I've made some comments and and done some content on the stuff in the past, but I don't actually care like that. I want to see them do good. I want to see them have good crowds, book good venues, but I, I also don't care that much to talk about it. And TNA fans love that stuff. They love getting real deep into um, what's going on behind the scenes and what Meltzer and Sean Sapp are saying and what um, where the show's going to be. And like, like AEW fans don't care to that extent of like, Oh, this this taping is going to be in Poughkeepsie. Like they, you know, it, it's going to be in this state and this city. Like that, they don't like. And WWE fans definitely don't. They they do not care to that extent. They just kind of wait for wrestling to come to the area and they watch it. But 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 TNA fans are real deep into that shit. Um, and then they're trying to forecast. Okay, this is the city they're in. Is it gonna is it gonna sell? You know, they really really care about those things. And just because I don't hair like that uh it, it's kind of hit me lately and i was just like man i, I just kind of review the show and uh for the people who are cool with that you know I, I i can you know that's fine but i think tna fans want more than that and i think they want more from me and um i'm i'm content with the way that i cover the show like i'm not going to go out of my way too much i um when i was still living in illinois i uh you know, I started my own Patreon for a little bit and I was trying to go deeper into some things. Uh, but then when I moved out here to Vegas, I just said, there's no way I can sustain that thing. Um, I just, it, it's really a time thing for me. I'm not saying uh, Mike has a bunch of free time or some of these other podcasts don't, but uh, I, I just, I just don't personally have the time to like dig into wrestling news. So uh, I'm, I'm cool. I, I want to see Mike really uh, build his stuff up. I think he, what he does is a lot of really, really want. I think a lot of fans do value my opinion, whether I'm being positive, negative, whatever. I think they've uh, listened to me for years and they continue to do that. And they continue to hear, you know, enjoy my take on things. But I do think that the majority of TNA fans want more from a content standpoint than I'm willing to give. So, um, I'm cool. Number two, you know, uh, I'm cool. If I fall down to the number three or whatever, you know, it's all about TNA at the end of the day. Uh, Gerard Ryan asking, do they have specific females, either individual names or tag teams that they're looking at to sign? So uh, that's not information I'm ever going to get. But what I can tell you is that whatever, enhancement talents they brought in for this particular set of tapings are our girls are looking they're looking at them and and they're probably look always looking at them um but i've just been told specifically i, I think there's two um that whoever was brought in for it's either these tapings or the next one so i i think it was this one though so if we see a couple enhancement matches whether it's on explosion or it's on impact that they are uh, girls specifically brought in that they are they are looking at. Um, Mark Jones, what ten? Wow, what 
What 10 female wrestlers on the indies, including the UK, you think would help the knockouts division? Also, do you think Gail Kim is not putting that much effort into building and managing the knockouts? So, yeah, 10 is a lot. Um, but, my friend, I came up with 10 for you. And there's probably names out there that are significantly better than this. Um, I'm just kind of going off who I've watched, who I like, uh, who I think is, you know, kind of TV ready or stands out from others. You know what I mean? So I've got the hex on here, of course. I, I just, I have to. Um, I, 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 next time I see them personally, I'm going to, I'm going to ask what the fuck is going on because I, I seriously don't understand why they're not part of this freaking division. They must not want to be. They must be content with doing Patreon and doing OnlyFans and doing um, content and uh, wrestling on the indies. It, it has to be, you know, doing, doing stuff on Twitch. I just have to believe that's what it is, but uh, I am going to look into it. <laughs> I'm definitely going to ask them because this, this is crazy. So uh, the hex will always be in my one and two. Um, there's a girl by the name of Tootie Lynn that uh, wrestles out of St. Louis that did some work for NWA who I think is really talented um, and I think is TV ready. Uh, Ali Rex is a name that comes to mind as well. She did a little bit of ROH stuff, has done a little bit of NWA stuff as well. Um, I think she's ready. That's someone that stands out to me. I'm always going to have Santana Garrett on my list. She's she's the the girl over at Women of Wrestling. And she's she's like that one name that you'll just never understand why the hell she wasn't a big deal somewhere. I mean, she can wrestle. She's gorgeous. She has the personality. She's photogenic. Like, she just has so much. She's a veteran. Um, I would imagine she's older, but she looks fantastic. So, I mean, it's not like you're... It's I'll, I'll never understand that one. That's another one where I'm like, she must not want to. But then she did some NXT stuff for a while. Uh, but I know she has like a shoot job, a pretty good one. And I'm trying to think what it is. I, I think it might be in the in the medical field or the or de dental field, something along those lines. I want to say it's a little more in the medical field, but it's possible she just doesn't want to be a full time wrestler. Uh, a couple other girls, uh, Lindsay Keegan, Lindsay Snow, I mean, uh, Kelsey Keegan, I'm sorry, Lindsay Snow, uh, Chantal that works in uh, Canada, uh, Jordan Blue, and then uh, Genocide. So those are those are 10 that I was able to uh, put together that I have interest in. I don't know what they're doing in the UK. Like, I don't follow that scene at all, like, not even a little bit. So I'm sure they have some some talent out there as well. Regarding um, Gail Kim in this division, I've been very, very critical. And I was actually reached out to on this because uh, I think one of my, my uploads got listened to and I was told to calm down. Um, so I, I'm going to answer this in a way that I think will help a lot of you guys uh, to feel a little more optimistic about what's coming with the knockouts division. Uh, but I've I've been told that Gail actually is working every day on trying to build this division. I know as fans, it's frustrating for us because we just don't see women coming in. Um, I mean, obviously, there was a video package teased uh, on this episode. Heather Reckless is coming in. So it's like, OK, well, now we're seeing some girls come in, you know, so. But in the past, like. <sighs> I was kind of going back to when I first started covering the show. You know, Dixie Cargan, Dixie Cargan, Dixie Carter and Billy Corgan were around. They would just kind of sign people, you know, with no, no direction, no nothing. Like someone they just thought was talented. Like when they brought in, randomly brought in like Caleb Conley. Um, or you brought in a Marche Rocket or you brought in a Braxton Sutter. And it was kind of like, okay, well, these guys are kind of good but what the hell do you do with them you know what i'm saying like you could just see there was absolutely no vision whatsoever <laughs> their whole time in the company 
but I think we've been used to that. Uh, when Don Don um, Callis was around, like he would bring in people. Uh, when Jeff Jarrett had his little run, I mean, every taping was someone new. You know, Congo Kong here, then KM here, and and uh, you know Nick Aldis here, and um, I mean, you know, Reno Scum would come in, and then um, Angel Rose, aka Diamante, and and uh, Brandy Lauren, and and they, they just it was like every every set of tape, we just saw someone coming in, you know, and uh, in this era, in the last couple of years. We sit here and we're just like, man, we're just waiting for people to be signed and new faces, and it just doesn't really happen. It, kind of, it happens at a very slow rate. So I have been assured that Gail Kim is working very hard at um, building this knockouts division up. But just like we as fans value the knockouts division, she values the knockouts division. So she's not going to just sign people to sign them. I keep bringing up NWA where I'm like, they, they bring girls in all the time. Gail's not going to do that. I've been assured that Gail is not going to do that because she values, and I'm, par- I, I'm paraphrasing here, but she basically values the name knockout. She values the division, and she's not going to just bring in girls just to bring them in. All right. Uh, what was the one girl they brought in years ago? MJ. MJ something or other. Um, I think she did a little NXT run as well. Like that was another one. They just, you're just signing names and there's no, no nothing for them, you know, not, nothing for them to do. MJ Jenkins. That's what it was. So Gail's not going to do that with this division. She's bringing in people that are, um, that can wrestle that are TV ready. Uh, you know, I've told she's. I've been told she even has like some girls will show up at a taping and their their gear isn't even up to par, and she's just like, "Come back when you've got new gear." O- almost militant, you know, like she's taking it very seriously, maybe even too seriously. But she is scouting this division hard, but she's only going to bring in the best. That is kind of what I'm being told. They're not going to sign people just to sign them. To bring them in, just to bring them in. That I mean, I've been asking, and the fans have been asking, just give us warm bodies, give us something. They are aware that the knockouts division this year is not where it should be. Um, because I, I was even honest in my conversation with them. I said the knockouts division is just not fun right now. I'm not saying I dislike the girls in it. The wrestling's not even that bad. It's just that the same people are fighting all the time, and this happens periodically with this division it happens every um every other year almost or every three years where it's we feel like it's not growing and then we're just watching the same people and that's where we've been at now and i've said it a thousand times that it just feels like they didn't prepare for the departure of the dianas and the mickeys and the trinities you know they felt like okay we're bringing in ash and she's gonna have all this star power and she's She's all we need. Her and Zaya Brookside, and that's going to last the year. You know, that's what it felt like. So I was explaining to TNA that it's just a perception. It's just the perception is that they're not trying with the knockouts division. Uh, but I, I have been assured that they are aware of, of the state of the division, and they are trying daily. They are working on it daily. But Gail is going to be very stubborn she's going to be very picky she is not going to bring in someone that she doesn't fully believe in so i hope that helps you guys out a little bit um but yeah whatever whatever women we see coming in as enhancement talents they are looking at there was a girl that showed up maybe two months ago it was a black girl i don't remember her name and everyone was on twitter oh sign her and i i mean i thought her match was so sloppy um there, there's sometimes there's a, a difference well not sometimes there's always but someone could come in and show all the athleticism in the world but if, if what they're hitting if the moves don't look good you know like we just we just have to stop every time they bring in some girl like oh sign them because i know we're desperate uh for new knockouts but 
if they don't meet the standard for Gail Kim, then she's they're not coming on. So obviously Heather Reckless is someone that they saw something in. They saw something in when they brought her in the first time. And again, I think she was wrestling Jody Thread. I I don't recall. All I remember was saying I had more interest in what Heather Reckless was doing in the match than the actual knockout. And the only people I could see myself saying that about is Jody Thread and Danny Luna. So um yeah. And then they brought her in again. And they feel like she's ready and she's good to go. So um, I don't know how many more knockouts we'll see this year. Obviously, there's Heather and they're um, they're teasing, but um, we're getting close to the end of the TNA year. So I think come 2025, we're, we're going to see a real big step up in the division. So um, I feel very good about it, and I'm someone that's been really critical of, of it of the knockouts i've been critical of it all year of the division the entire year but i'm i feel pretty good about it um coming next year after having my convo so that's going to do it for me folks i will uh talk to you soon when i review impact peace